Hey everyone, Sam Cinerelli, h one Fencing. Welcome back to IKNS Armory. Today, another requested video from a subscriber asked me to uh, show how to do a LeMay check with a multimeter, specifically this one from Harbor Freight. Um, it's a C-Tech digital multimeter, a Centec digital multimeter. Has a bunch of different functions on it. I'm only worried about the ohms at this point, resistance. Um, before I do this, let's go over resistance real quick. Um, resistance that is allowed. It's, that, that's the, it's measured in ohms. That's the amount of resistance to flow of electricity in a system. You're allowed one ohm per line of each line of the body cord. You're allowed two in the weapon, though nobody ever checks it. You're allowed five in the lame, three in the uh, floor pad, I believe it is. I forget what the reel is. And it's all cumulative. So if you have a, a weapons at two, cords at one, you know, there's three. And if you have three ohms in the floor cord, you're at six. By the time we get back to the back to the box, it adds up. Now these boxes will fire up to about 250. Uh, so chances are, unless you have an actual dead spot or a broken wire, it's not going to not function. But the limits are there for a reason. The problem we have with a meter that doesn't can't zero out is you may go to an event that's going to have a LeMay check, and the head tech is going to hew right to the line. Where in LeMay's case, it's five ohms. Five point one is going to fail. I've worked events where the head tech said, "Yeah, go up to eight. You know, because it's not that bad. But if you have a head tech that's going to go to, to five and that's it, adhere to the rules, then if you're anywhere near the limit while testing with this, where you can't zero the meter out, then you may run into the problems. Let me show what I mean by not zeroing the meter. Meter is on now. I'm going to shorten these two probes together and making sure that my fingers aren't involved in it. So the only thing that's in contact right now are the, are the metal parts. And if you look at the meter, you see that it's not showing zero. You know, it's flipping around the one ohm area, one just about half of either side of it, and that's where they're running the problems. But I'm going to show you how to use this as check your lemmings. It's not the best check in the world, but it'll do in a pinch. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the glove, here's the meter, here are the probes, and I'm going to touch the meter here. And here's the probe. You see how the meat? Okay, now you see it's on the edge. This is actually very good on this one. Ah, fuck it. Take two. Three, two, oops, three, two, one. Okay, so here we go. We have the meter, we have the glove, we have my probes. So I'm going to touch the one probe to the lame. Just if we touch the other one, what happens to the meter here? And there's a resistance. It's actually very good. Now I'm going to drag the probes this way, not with the pointy end, the cross like that. Make sure it's always in contact to kind of, you know, make sure there's, there's continuity there and I don't. Um, uh, poke a hole in the main material. So going over the meter, here we are. And it's going okay. And that's pretty good there. Now, one thing you should not ever miss is the inside of the cuff. These do go dead after a while. And when I'm doing control, I do check the cuff. So there's the probe again, meter again, and probe. Same thing. Inside the cuff is good. And I'll check the entire interior of the cuff. And uh, that is how you check it. As I said, it's not a very good check. It is uh, quick and dirty. It is certainly not the kind of check I would uh, do for a knack. If you bring it to me, I'm going to do it in my regular test box. But for quick and dirty, there you go. That's how you check your uh, lame. From, also for masks and, and foil and saber and maze was the glove and the manchette. As always, happy armoring.